We are together now, you and I, gonna go on a little orc hunt. This is a paid promotion, but it was made to look like an independent review from a popular video Getting game expert on YouTube. Not today, sir. Oh, ho, ho, tonight. The reviewer and Jesus Warner Christ Brothers, the maker of the game, so kept their relationship hidden Goodbye. and oh, got charged oh, oh. by American regulators for deceiving <laughs> consumers. Funny. Chloe was telling me that you really wanted to get involved. In the first family of social media, the Kardashians, face an official complaint that they also deceive consumers. The women have reportedly been paid as much as $75,000 for a single endorsement on Instagram, but those payments haven't always been disclosed. I think the vast majority of social media influencers out there are not following the law. They're not disclosing that many of their posts are ads when they are. Advertising, we all know it when we see it, whether it's in print or on television. With social media, it's not so clear, and neither are the rules. Consumers can easily be fooled. Bazinga, we just heard back from HSBC. And? Boom, we're win, we're go. Yay! <laughs> Tiffany Heimpol runs the new Canadian office of Isaiah, an American company that specializes in connecting social media stars to brands. These days, this is big business. Well, you've got some influencers that are creating, they're, they're coveting a million UMVs a month. What well, does that mean, UMVs? That means unique monthly visitors. So Heimpol says social media often rivals UMV traditional UMV. media outlets these days. So you have a million sets of eyeballs that are arriving at this web page monthly. I mean, that can be as many as certain uh, print advertising on the weekend. Rogers, Telus, Subway Sandwiches, Pampers, most advertising campaigns nowadays include a social media dimension. According to Advertising Standards Canada, the rules are in fact crystal clear. Its code of conduct was updated just last month to include that influencers must disclose when there's a financial relationship behind an endorsement. Meanwhile, the Competition Bureau tells CBC News the enforcement of deceptive marketing practices in the area of the digital economy is a top priority for the Bureau and that it's constantly monitoring the marketplace. I guess yours is a latte, mine's a chai latte, so yeah. chai latte for me. Casey Palmer isn't worried. He's a social media influencer, one of the few men in Canada who blogs about parenting. We write about our kids and being dads and piecing all that together. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> he has a full-time job. He writes his blog after hours. But it's so popular, it's earned him 12 clients who pay to be featured in his articles. I think that honesty and transparency should be part of one's persona. If you're not being honest about the things you're putting out, people will stop paying attention to you because they can tell that there's a phoniness that goes with the pieces you're putting out online. He says he's always gone out of his way to disclose his client relationship. Do you see other influencers who are not disclosing? Yep, definitely. Uh, there's, I, I don't know what the uh, ratio is from those who do and don't, but there's still the crowd of those who haven't yet decided that they should put a disclosure statement on all their pieces they put out. He's doing a lot. He's getting bigger and bigger. He's great. Check him out. Back at Isaiah, Tiffany Heimpel insists her company is careful to follow the rules. But we actually, we worked with the FTC in the U.S. in 2008 to come up with these regulations. When we came to Canada, it was kind of the Wild West, so there weren't a lot of regulations in place. There are now, although so far only the penalties are clear. The Competition Bureau says a company that violates the law can face steep fines of up to $15 million. Diane Buckner, CBC News, Toronto.